Welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. Please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below. Welcome back, everybody, to the Fan Club podcast. We have an exciting episode and guest in studio with us today, Carolina Hurricanes forward. Seth Jarvis, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having Thanks me. Thanks for uh, spending some of your off day with us here in Minneapolis. Nothing I'd rather do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, our first official NHL player in the pod room. Ooh. And what better than a lovely Winnipeg boy? Oh, yep. yeah. Represent it, yeah. Stick together. <laughs> always, <laughs> always. No, it's funny. Uh, so we obviously just recently met. I just so happened to be at the Vegas Knights game, and I sent my younger brother, Hunter, a video of when you got that shorthanded goal, <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, oh, no way, that's that's great. And so, like, I didn't even know you guys were, like, buddies. Yeah. I know I grew up watching you and stuff, like, always playing against Hunter, and then he, like, let me know you guys were buddies, so I was like, okay, that's cool, and then... Long story short, we're at Loud Luxury, and I see some of the Carolina Hurricanes <laughs> pull up, and I just like I had the confidence to kind of like eye you down, and just hoping that he knew who I was, and yeah. had a nice little handshake, yeah. quick little chat, and a DM later, here we are. Here we Perfect. are. Perfect. Couldn't so, have worked out better for the schedule. Timing. Less than two weeks ago, where you guys like connected, and then yeah. when I saw like that you guys were coming to Minneapolis. And then there was a gap day, and then I sent that DM hoping that maybe you'd come in the night of, yeah. and then that uh, that timing just was perfect. So yeah, yeah. thanks again for coming. Oh, Thank you course. NHL for scheduling this <laughs> game, <laughs> this game perfectly. Yeah. yeah. So you're obviously from Winnipeg, as Frizz said, uh, good old Manitoba boy. A lot of Manitoba connections in this room right now. But uh, tell us a little bit about growing up, playing up there. We hear all the stories from these guys, but uh, you actually made it. And you made it big, <laughs> unlike any of us. So tell us a little bit about growing up, playing in Winnipeg, what the hockey life is like in Winnipeg. Yeah, it was it was cool. Like, I played against, like he said, his brother. Um, it was a lot of competition. Hockey is obviously the only sport kind of to play. So it was busy. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was kind of the same like here in Minnesota. There's, True. It's kind of everyone lives, breathes hockey. Uh, the Rink Hockey Academy opened up. I was kind of the first, uh, I was the first year of it which was kind of new to the area and in some ways kind of screwed up the uh, the local minor hockey a little bit, but I think it's incredible. They uh, opened up a new kind of world for college, looking at college and stuff like that. And then, like I was saying before, I watched my brother play in the Winkler Flyers like you guys and thought uh, that's where I want to be. But uh, I found out maybe there's a couple other routes I could have <laughs> taken. <laughs> yeah, that's – so you were like one of the first guys to join RHA – because when I was at your age, like we always had to go to Kelowna or uh, Penticton for like those ones. So when we saw that RHA was starting in Winnipeg, it was kind of like a bittersweet moment. I mean, it was great to be able to go out to BC, but to also have that higher level of hockey come to Winnipeg was uh, must have been pretty cool to start off. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was great. I mean, like we had our first year, kind of just all the best local manitoba guys play together mm -hmm. and it was cool to see us compete against like you said the our, the penticton the Kelowna, those guys and, and do well but i think uh we didn't really understand it kind of watered down maybe like the monarchs yeah. the warriors stuff like that which kind of sucks because obviously it takes money to play and exactly. not everyone has the expendable cash but i think um I think for development wise, there, you couldn't beat it. There was nothing better, nothing better available. I mean, in Winnipeg, when you're playing Warriors or whatever, you can practice twice a week. We were practicing five times a week, working out five times a week. So it was uh, it was a pretty easy answer. Just uh, it's uh, it's tough. It's not for everybody. Do you have yeah. to get asked to join that, or is it just try out? Kind of both. both. Yeah, I don't know how it's working now. Yeah, like for example, um, like I was a Warrior, mm -hmm. so. Every no matter where you lived or whatever, you always played with the same people. You couldn't. It was the only way you could switch teams or go to a different area was if you got cut and then you were allowed to move. So, like for example, the year older than me and the year younger than me, the Warriors would go to the championships or win it every <laughs> time. But my year, we would get like five wins, <laughs> and it just sucked. It was every single year, and then you weren't like getting anything different. So obviously, you get you have a different spot to go to if you wanted to now. Mm -hmm. So, so 
growing up, I know you mentioned that like hockey was a huge part of it. Were you doing any other sports uh, outside of hockey, like whether it's the summertime or even like during the season? Yeah, I uh, played a lot of lacrosse, a lot of football. I played football for eight, nine years, probably. What, what team? Charleswood Broncos. I was, this guy a, was, flag I was a Mustang. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he played flag football. <laughs> the Mustangs kicked our ass. Oh, I don't know how many times, but yeah, football was like it was hockey and football yeah. until hockey got more serious and you couldn't really do both. But I remember like I'd be have tryouts would be at the end of football season and I'd leave halfway through hockey tryouts to go play football, mm-hmm. and it was like something that I fell in love with and I still love. Like if I could go and play, I'd love to. <laughs> But uh, I kind of had to quit when I couldn't see over my old line anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so was there, like, for you, did you did you think that playing those multi-sports, like, did that end up giving you – because, like, you see it nowadays, like, a lot of kids are playing hockey year-round and they get burnt out from playing it across, like, a whole calendar year. Did that add to your development in hockey where it's, like, when that time came for you to shift out of, like, football, for instance, and go hard into hockey, it was, like, was that – adding to your development of like not going all in hockey from the very beginning 100 percent, yeah i i don't i don't ever understand why people kid they put their kids in hockey and play all year round it makes no sense to me i think you have to expand your horizons you want to be an athlete first and foremost i think you only do that by playing other sports but like for me for football like there's not a ton of correlation between football and hockey but i think the biggest thing was just being able to work with different types of people and hockey is kind of surrounded by the same groups of guys yeah. same kind of people and I think in football you deal with a lot of different attitudes, a lot of different people, and I think it made a good job just yeah. trying to become a leader. Get, get, your, get your quick steps in. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> quick feet. I feel like it helps kids with social skills too. Oh. Like if you just have the same 20 friends all year long, yeah. friends or teammates, yeah. but yeah. like you got to expand your horizons a little 100%. bit. Especially kids nowadays. I just sit on their iPads all day. <laughs> <laughs> so after the rink, um, let's talk about a little bit moving away, moving out of Winnipeg. Uh, you went to the WHL. Um, what was that like? How old were you when you did that? I started at 15 and then was there for like three months and then went full time at 16. Wow. So as a 16 year old leaving home, what's the biggest thing you learned right away? I, uh, oh God, <laughs> I I don't know, man. It was awful. The first like two months, like our team was pretty good. We had like guys like Cody Glass was back, mm-hmm. so we had like guys that were we were supposed to make a push. So as a 16 year old, you're not playing much, and like you're coming from rank where I'm playing a lot mm-hmm. having success and then you go in at 16 and i'm not playing in the third period i just kind of sit on the bench and i remember i had stuffed jolly ranchers in my gloves and just like oh, eat jolly ranchers yeah. <laughs> classic bench candy yeah but it, it was tough the first couple months until you like then that's where i realized i figured out how to be a good teammate i think that's when you realize you can be a glue guy and help out in the yeah. locker room a lot more uh and then it turned into an absolute blast then i had the time of my life and then Obviously, as you progress, you get older, you get more of an opportunity. But that first year was uh, <laughs> was a tough one for me. Yeah, I think a lot of people overlook how just because a kid leaves early doesn't mean they're going, they're a stud right away, yeah. right? Like, you do have to still pay your dues, especially oh, yeah, when you're, yeah. you're leaving at that age. And, you know, I don't know how they treat rookies in the WHL, but I'm sure you had a lot of a lot of rookie tasks and duties to do. Yeah. What, what led you to deciding on going to the WHL oh. opposed to, I know you mentioned, the like Winkler Flyers growing up, that was yeah. always kind of a staple for you wanting yeah. to play there. Or but coming to the states, or going yeah, to the states. Never know. Uh, a, a few things. I, I definitely considered college. I I went to like the Fargo Force, uh, like camp skates and whatever. Checked out the Winkler Flyers for four years of my life, but uh, there was just I don't know. It was kind of a thing. Like I, I'm not great in school. I'm not the smartest person ever. So it kind of made sense. I don't want to try and have to go through all high school and go to college and figure out from there. But I thought if I'm going to take this hockey thing seriously, I may as well go to the dub and kind of put all my eggs in one basket and see what happens. If not, be a construction worker somewhere. But uh, that was uh, was kind of my mindset that if hockey didn't work out, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's fair. (laughs) Wing it, and it worked out. Exactly. Did that add, like, any pressure, like, from your family, like, when you're making that decision of, throwing your eggs all in one basket was there any just like kind of just like added pressure on you just like okay like let's figure this out like all my eggs are heading into <laughs> into hockey here and if it doesn't work out then maybe it was the construction yeah. as like the backup <laughs> but yeah both my parents were teachers so they were pushing the college pretty hard and then uh yeah 
I I didn't really not at the time I didn't really feel any pressure at the time they're they're supportive I think now looking back on it, I was like that was kind of a little bit of a risk you have to take but mm. I I loved it I knew going into Portland what I was gonna experience there and how good the organization was the coaching staff and if I that was my best chance and if I wasn't gonna take it then who knows what would happen yeah so I guess you did technically come to the states but you're yeah. you're hanging out in Portland what uh What's the hockey atmosphere in Portland like? I don't really know nothing about hockey out there. It's kind of crazy. It's pretty good. I mean, like, we have a good rivalry with Seattle, so that's always fun. We'd play a New Year's Eve game, and we'd play at the uh, the Trailblazers Arena, and you get like ten thousand people in oh. there, which for juniors, insane. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, they uh, unbelievable fan base and a lot of support. And like you said, not a traditional hockey market, but something that I loved every second of. Yeah. What was your biggest takeaway from uh, your career? In the, in the junior rankings. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, there were a few. That three and threes are the worst thing ever, and my body can't do it anymore. <laughs> uh, the bus ride is terrible, no matter what. Uh, Prince George? Oh, <laughs> my God. We had one year we played Prince George on, like, a Friday. Went up, so 16 hours to Portland, from Portland to Prince George. You got 16 hours to play Prince George on a Friday. Bus back to Portland that whole Friday night, Saturday. <laughs> play prince george on a sunday at home oh my God. stupidest oh, thing i've ever done yeah. in my life it was like they had to do it too but worse scheduling i could have ever imagined but uh yeah i mean there was a few things like when you're picking up chew bottles at two in the morning on the back of the bus as a 16 year old you really start to rethink what you're doing yeah but i think it just builds you to be uh like i said a better teammate and a little bit a better person yeah for sure so let's let's jump to 2020 2021 um Big season, obviously. Is the was that the end of the dub where you went to Chicago? End of the season? I don't know. Or was it kind of during? Was it alone or something? All the years are kind of mashed yeah, together know, right? now because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but what was that jump like moving down to Chicago? Obviously, it's a step up. It's your first taste of professional. Um, and how did that experience go in Chicago? What were your thoughts? Were you were you thinking like, wow, I, like I still have this shot? What were the coaches telling you? Just kind of what was that? that newer experience like and now you're getting paid to play hockey yeah it was we it was weird because i went to carolina for literally i think four days mm -hmm. we did like they had their pre bubble or whatever pre skates so they brought like five of us in to skate with the team i was there for five days they told me right away you're not making the team so i was like, <laughs> I was like oh sweet like okay uh i didn't really know what was going to happen after those five days but yeah i went down to chicago uh first time living alone I lived with a, a roommate, but living on our own, and it was mm -hmm. awful. It was just Uber Eats, and, like, you're not making a ton of money in the A, mm -hmm. especially at that time because of COVID, so everything's kind of cut in half, too. So it was, it was uh, living tight, but uh, it was a ton of fun. We were living in this, like, little hotel thing. It was, it was all right. And then the play, we shared our team with Nashville. So I think our roster had, like, 40 guys on it. Wow. Damn. Like, our dress room, we had, like, the whole dress room, and then we had, like, 13 stalls in the middle <laughs> for, like, guys to get dressed, and, like, new guys are coming in and out every day. And, yeah, so, like, our, we had 15 scratches a game. Wow. And it that was... Is, what? That is such nuts. a weird time for hockey, oh. especially, like, during the COVID stuff. And, like, as, like, a new player oh coming in, God. trying to, like, make a name for yourself, yeah. That, yeah, that had to have been just, like, a weird experience. Because it's terrible. Th where do the Chicago Wolves play? We played in that time. We played in their practice rink in Schaumburg. Okay. So you're in like a little. It's a community rink. Yeah. No one in there, and you're playing like the Iowa Wild on like a Tuesday at 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I had like Cody McLeod screaming down the boards at me, and I'm eight, <laughs> I'm 18 or 19, like panicking, and so it was it was a mess. But we had a lot of good guys down there to like kind of take care of the young guys. Yeah. I think that's what they did a good job at. They brought in a lot of veterans that have been in the A, been in the NHL, and basically just ba babysat like three or four of us the whole time. But uh, thankfully, I was out of there in like a month and a half. It sounds like playing everywhere when you were a bit younger really kind of developed you into who you, the player you are today. Just like learning from old guys, maybe getting tougher a little bit earlier in life uh, and learning how to live on your own, especially. A little bit, yeah. I think I got a problem with trying to run my mouth a little bit. I get, <laughs> I get comfortable pretty quickly. Oh, so okay. I think uh, I think the pe they, I think they respect it a lot. And they, they like coming back. I mean, I love getting true. I think getting chirped you kind of know you're part of the team and it's a little bit yeah. of a term of endearment in hockey so uh i i appreciate the quicker that comes the more comfortable i feel with that first sniff that you had down there in chicago did you like in that that time 
were you thinking like I can make it up to the big league with uh, the Hurricanes? Like, was that a thought that you had? Were you like confident on your experience in Chicago that next year, next season, you could do it? Yeah, even at that time, like I, it was going really well for me, and uh, the WHL wasn't really didn't hear anything about it starting up, so I didn't really know what was going to happen. And I was playing well, and I was thinking, oh, like I could keep playing well here who knows what'll happen maybe they'll call me up maybe i'll stay down here whatever but obviously the dub start i went back but yeah it instilled a ton of confidence and just being able to learn the pro style of hockey that early and at such a young age helped me tremendously yeah that's like something for us like that for me like the transition from like juniors to like college it's just like that jump like you don't like really realize it until you're like already in there but like, I'm sure that jump from the dub to the A, like, it was quite a big difference. And then, yeah. obviously, you went back to the dub, so. That was weird. Really, <laughs> really, really weird. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that at all. That w- we played, like, I think 25 games, and there was no, like, end goal. There was no, like, title you're playing for. You're just playing 25 games to play 25 games. And so you're there, and you're just like, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. There's, we're wearing, like, Bella Cla- We had these, like, Bella Clava things <laughs> that, like, if you're on the bench, you have to pull them up. And so you play, like, a... Th- 45 minute shift you come off you can't breathe and we have our trainers pulling them up oh over our face like, i can't oh breathe gosh. it was it, it wasn't a fun those that, that little bit wasn't uh wasn't fun yeah when we when we are so covid happened while we were still in school but obviously we have cages and bubbles so like what we would do for like practice is we'd have the mask like literally just on our <laughs> chin guard and then whenever we need to we just like slowly just bump it up a little <laughs> bit just enough so like we're still wearing our mask but wow oh, that geez. was tough yes yeah. we never did it with a visor no we didn't yeah. we could kind of hide ours in the cage and the yeah. refs wouldn't really say anything <laughs> yeah. but it was that was the weirdest year of playing oh. hockey probably for everyone yeah we played 10 games Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. oh 10 games and probably 150 practices yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally we were in good shape, but my God, <laughs> forgot how to actually play and get ready. Yeah. So what was your mindset then heading into the next season, heading to training camp? I'm sure you had a pretty focused summer kind of leading in after that year and being like, hey, this is this is another shot to, to make the big club right out of camp. Um, and what was that experience like? Were you in Carolina for most of the summer? Were you back in Winnipeg? I was back in Winnipeg. I, I like being at home mm-hmm. uh, for the summer. But yeah, I that was twenty five games in junior kind of left a sour taste in my mouth, so I kind of wanted to be done with it. I said that's enough, so I went into camp ready to make the team. I knew it was kind of a long shot and it was gonna be tough, but I yeah I I fully prepared to not go back, and I was looking forward to to kind of the challenge, and it it went it went well I guess. Dude, I forget how young you were. Like you still have so many options if you don't make it. Yeah. Like, at this yeah. time. Uh huh. Yeah. What's it like then, like, so when you're down there for training camp and you don't really know, like, whether you make it out of the camp or not, like, or where do you stay, like, during that time period? They just, like, put you up in a hotel? Yeah, so you're in a hotel, and the way we do it in Carolina, you have, like, it's kind of fun. Like, we have, like, a team, the, the, the team. They call yeah. it the A and B skates. So you have the team and then, like, three extra guys, and then you have the AHL guys and the prospects in the second skate. And so I started the whole camp in the second skate, and, like, f- it's almost like when you're, like, eight. And like, the, and you're trying out, and like, you s- the group slowly starts filing out, and like, they slowly start cutting guys. Yeah. So every couple of days, guys get released, 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 sent down, whatever. And then there's like four guys left in our skate. So the team practices, and there's us four, <laughs> us four <laughs> going out there doing whatever. <laughs> and then the second last day of camp, they bring us into the real group, and that's when you're like, okay, like they're giving me a chance, they're mm-hmm. giving me a look, and then preseason starts, and and all that kind of gets rolling. Yeah, the obviously you came from hockey crazed city Winnipeg. Were you like pleasantly surprised to see how much people love hockey down there in Raleigh? Because when we went there, we were there for the stadium series oh, last year. They love it. Those Caniacs, <laughs> they're crazy. Yeah, yeah, you guys caught the best one. Stadium series was mm-hmm. unbelievable. That was yeah, but yeah, it's insane. I think we our last home game was like fifty consecutive sellouts. Now, wow. like we're doing really good down there, and I think it helps the team's doing really well. But the fans have been incredible, and like, just even like the anthem, like they scream red during <laughs> the Star Spangled Banner or whatever, and it's it just kind of scares me every time because you're expecting it, but it's always louder than than you really realize. Yeah, we were at uh, 
I remember for one of the games, we were at Tin Roof, oh, just geez. hanging out, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all these red and black jerseys came flooding in, yeah. and that's everyone's just having a great time. So was, that's awesome to see with those Southern teams that you don't really typically expect. Oh, it's yeah. Even like Dallas is incredible. Like all those teams down there are doing really well. Yeah, it's fun to see too. Cause when when did the Canes win the cup? Oh six. Was it oh six? Yeah. God, I'm getting old. <laughs> but. From then, and then obviously teams go through up and downs throughout years, and now that you guys have been back in the limelight for for s- few consecutive years now, it's fun to see. And there's so many people like we have a lot of hockey guys fans that are in Carolina, yeah. And it's like s- it's almost like this new wave of hockey people who yeah. just are attached to it and die hard. And we saw that firsthand at that stadium series when we're walking around the tailgate we're yeah. like every two trucks you guys want a beer you guys want a shot <laughs> blah, blah. Like, Holy smokes. we got an hour till puck drop and we're <laughs> sinking them right now That's awesome. what's it like then for you guys like walking around raleigh then do you do you get noticed a lot if you're walking around like for dinner yeah it's gotten a lot more popular even since i like it's only my third year but even from the first year to now uh it's gotten pretty crazy like you'll go to dinner you can they're pretty respectful yeah. on like not coming up to you while you're at dinner or whatever, but you can feel people staring. And then when you get up, they'll come and talk to you. But like when you go like tin roof or, or bars <laughs> downtown, <laughs> um, it gets pretty wild and yeah. it gets pretty, pretty hectic. Have you, this is a little side question. We went there when, uh, we only went there once, but it was absolutely amazing. Have you been to barbecue lab? No, I haven't. You have, if you like barbecue, that that's the place. That's the spot. <laughs> that that place has a special spot in our. Do <laughs> you have sure. a barbecue spot down there? I no, I rotate the same three restaurants, and they're all <laughs> chains. <so. laughs> what is the big chain down there in the Bo South? Jangles? Yeah. Bojangles. Bojangles is a big <laughs> one. I've never had that yet. You gotta get in there. Oh, have you had boiled peanuts? No, what is? What is oh, that? oh, it's a big yeah. Carolina thing. That was at the tailgate too. Yeah, it's literally boiled peanuts in a and can. And you eat it with the shell on, soft. <laughs> you yeah. guys are more Carolina than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have experienced everything. <laughs> but dude, if you run, run around that tailgate, you're yeah. gonna yeah. experience <laughs> anything. <laughs> tailgate sucks you in, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Um, so for you, like, what level did you say like was kind of like the biggest jump for you? Like, obviously going from playing in Winnipeg, leaving home, like that's a huge like transition in itself to the dub and then from the dub to the A and then obviously NHL now. Which one do you think was the biggest like transitional jump for you? Um, I don't know. That's a good one. I think like, because when you go from junior to the NHL, like it's your dream. So you're running off pure adrenaline mm-hmm. forever. Like that whole first season, I couldn't even remember <laughs> what happened. I was just, every night was adrenaline. I was just kind of flying out there just by the like the wind of my pants, like just <laughs> hanging out, having fun. I think uh I think going from like yeah, playing minor hockey to junior was really tough cuz I've lived away for the first time. I had a great billet family, but like even then like I'm going to a new high school. I don't know anybody. I know four guys I go to the school mm-hmm. that I go s- that I play on the team with like I'm trying to <laughs> trying to make friends. They know nothing. Like, we have no similar interests <laughs> like and like I took seven gym classes in my between two years at high school like I was oh. just kind of just <laughs> breezing by and so I wasn't making a whole lot of friends that way but I think that that was the toughest one just because you're never you're living alone now you're meeting on the other side of the country like mm-hmm. it, it was a tough one yeah yeah I feel like being being that age too and like it's a weird you're age. kind of an outsider in the oh. high school especially because you're not from there you're playing hockey there everyone knows who you guys are yeah. when you're walking yeah, in especially if there's a rap like an old like something happened oh. back in the day and they, everyone just has the <laughs> rap now yeah yeah so what uh what's the team dynamic like in carolina now you guys have some of the most exciting younger guys um there's always a ton of funny interviews especially your recent <laughs> one <laughs> um it just seems like a a super fun dynamic down there a lot of like i said a lot of younger guys who who kind of came in s- that similar age brackets too. Yeah, we have a great group. Like you said, we have a good group of like guys within a couple years of me, so we have like a good group of young guys with me. And then yeah, the older guys like we have like Bernsey who's an absolute <laughs> character. Mm-hmm. Like Jordan has been around forever, so like those guys kind of lead the ship and then we have like guys like Aho and and just bona fide stars that kind of make it easy to come to the rink every day and have fun. And then like guys like Martinuk just come and keep it light like <laughs> guys, you guys you can joke around with make it really easy for coming as a young guy and be comfortable right away and uh it's just it's just been a blast he's uh is he brandon 
Martinuk? Born in Brandon, but uh, I think Albertan. He doesn't ah. claim Brandon, okay. sadly. Oh. He doesn't want to be a Manitoban. <laughs> and uh, obvious, So, yeah, great team, but I think it's well known. Like, you guys obviously have a great coach, too. What's it like playing for uh, potentially a uh, Hall of Famer? Rod the Bod. Is he still jacked, as everyone says? It's. N- I think he's probably more jacked now. <laughs> he has more time to spend in the yeah. gym. But he, he's awesome. He's he's an unbelievable coach. He's unbelievable person he's someone that i think everyone just gets like a extra boost of energy playing for just because you know everything he's saying and preaching he did if he's yelling at you to block a shot you know he's diving face first to block a shot so it's pretty easy to play for someone like that and then yeah just the energy he brings every day he like his pregame speeches he doesn't stop walking around (laughs) oh he's amped up oh my god he doesn't tie his shoes and like sometimes he'll trip over his laces a little bit (laughs) and it's hilarious but he's he's just like ton of energy so so much fun to play for and he gets scary at sometimes he, he's oh, yeah. real intense yeah. he yells but it's uh i i love it and i wouldn't trade it for anything yeah could you have predicted uh your personal success if you were to see where you're at right now with your points and just overall success you've had on the ice could you have predicted this back prior to your first season in the nhl Maybe then, yeah, but la- coming from last year, no, coming from last year, I was, I was had a tough year the year before, so I was coming in kind of low expectations, whatever, just trying to have fun. But yeah, it's been it's been great. I think that first year coming to the NHL, like I said, I was running off adrenaline, and I don't really remember a whole lot, but I had a ton of fun. And then the second year was a tough one, and now this year having success feels good again. It feels like I found my game, and and I've been expanding it, and just. Uh, just enjoying every moment of it, even like the the downs, the ups and downs. We had a tough uh, tough losing streak there for a while, but uh, just being able to come out of that and and still be competing for uh, the top spot in the metro and and making a good playoff push has has been fun. Yeah. The uh, so my question is, have you been to every arena yet? Have you played against? Yeah. What What is your, in your opinion, your kind of most sneaky fun like underrated uh place to play against oh there's the vegas there's yeah. the yeah, those new sneaky. york like do you have one seattle's a fun one seattle's okay. a cool See, environment we've never been there yeah that's a cool they got they got a nice little setup going on in there um i mean like we have our rivals in new york so that's mm-hmm. kind of like what I, like you know that's gonna be fun when you go there dallas is actually a good one speaking of that we were just there dallas is a fun one and i like arizona for it kind of brings you back to college because it's yeah. like a small arena. It's a yeah. little bit different. <laughs> I couldn't imagine playing there 41 games at home, mm-hmm. but going there once a year, ton of fun, and it's a it's a great uh, great town too. Did you have you had your Win- Winnipeg welcoming? Yep, that Win- would that would have been Winnipeg's been cool. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. How many people did you have out to that game? My first year would have been like 40 something, 45, oh, 50. Small. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it was. I played for free for the next like three yeah. months. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably uh, just forty tickets that you got. Yeah, and then, and then who knows, however many other people bought yeah. just to come see you too. Well, mm-hmm. come see the Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> show on sure. ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. I can't imagine going back to the hometown, being able to play in front of family, friends, and you know, I feel like that means so much to to the community too. To see one of their own, born and raised making it all the way like obviously they love mark stone when he comes back all these amazing players out of winnipeg and then you're kind of the new wave of that yeah I, yeah like yeah i think being the younger guy it's kind of cool i have a lot more connections with younger people in winnipeg than maybe some of those mm-hmm. guys do but yeah when i come back like i go home eat with my family and then i go over to my buddy's house and we hang out and that's the funnest part for me is just being able to see my old buddies and like they're still huge hockey fans. They came and visited me in Carolina just before we came on this road trip. So when they, uh, they're they huge hockey nerds, and so it's <laughs> funny to, to hang out with them, and they ask a ton of questions, and, and they're always having fun. But just to be to see that side of it, because, like, we grew up, I played with those guys since I was six, and so, like, to see how much they love it means a lot more to me just because I get to live it. Right. And so they can kind of – they live through me a little bit because they're like, oh, is this guy a good guy, is it whatever. Yeah. But uh, it's it's so fun to be able to go home. Yeah, just think of all those coaches that like helped you along the way oh too, yeah. and they see you actually living out your dream. Like, that shows that they did their job as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had their guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so obviously, I mentioned you had that funny little media clip around All Star time. Yeah. Um, how was the All Star break? Did you enjoyed yourself? I'm sure. And uh, 
Do you like to have a little fun with the media? It seems like it seems like players these days are, you know, they're being a little bit lighter. They're not doing the typical hockey answers. Unless maybe it, there's a down point in the season, which is yeah. understandable. But do you kind of get excited when they come in and you can <laughs> mess with them a little bit? A little bit, yeah. They don't want to talk to me a whole lot. <laughs> they, they leave the serious questions to, like, our captain and Aho and those guys. But, yeah, when they when someone comes to my stall and is ready to talk to me, I, I try to give them something. Um, I kind of have this thing. If you ask a stupid question, you're getting a stupid answer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it depends on what you ask. If they're asking a serious question, I'll I'll give some thought into it. I'll give them a decent answer or try to. <laughs> but yeah, when they ask me about the All Star break and All Star game, uh, I've seen all the fan votes and like some people are getting mad at me. They're like, "Oh, he's not grateful or whatever." I don't want to be voted in. I want to <laughs> earn it. Like I want to yeah. be yeah. an All Star, whatever. And like coming in Carolina like you have the New Yorks you have the Toronto's you know it's in Toronto mm-hmm. you know Toronto's gonna have mm-hmm. six guys in the all-star game so you kind of have I didn't want to get my hopes up and be oh maybe I'm going to the all-star game and then get crushed I want to set the bar low <laughs> I make it unbelievable I don't I already kind of knew but yeah it was uh the, the media's I like having fun with the media and we have such a small group of media that you kind of come personal yeah, in yeah. Carolina so it's easy to kind of joke around does any them. of the guys in your team like when they see it, just kind of like <laughs> whether it's on Twitter or whatever platform like a snippet of your interview where it's like you're joking around is that kind of the talking point yeah. in, the, in the days to come in the locker room <laughs> yeah yeah they uh everyone everyone likes it everyone I think some guys uh they don't feel quite comfortable doing that I don't know why I feel comfortable that it just kind of comes out but yeah, they uh, they bring it up sometimes. Depends on how like the one B All Star game went pretty viral. Yeah. So that one got brought up for a while, and uh, I had one the other day. I don't know if it got posted anywhere, but like Aho was standing, we were next to each other in the stall, and he's standing next to me, listening to me give this interview. I can see him out the corner of my eye, like rolling his eyes, doing whatever. <laughs> and he walks to our media guy after. He's like, "We got another viral clip coming." <laughs> but it's just like little stuff like that. Uh, it definitely gets brought up. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Obviously, all the hockey accounts like spit and chicklets and all the other ones—they just eat that stuff yeah. up. So that no, it is nice to see a different part of the game like that and guys having fun. So I know something that we uh, looked up earlier was your lie detector <laughs> test with Dan, <laughs> yeah. uh, our friends at Empty Netters. But they—that was that must have been kind of funny but it might have been intimidating you didn't know what he's gonna ask yeah i was scared because yeah like you said i didn't know what was coming and i didn't know he was playing like a part yeah i didn't know Bond he was like, yeah supposed <laughs> to like not react and so like i was going through it and i was trying to like like make it fun whatever and he wasn't laughing and i was like this is going <laughs> awful i was like i absolutely bombed this this is gonna be terrible and then it all finished, and at the end, he's like laughing his ass off. He's like, "Oh, that was great! Like, this was, you've done, you did so good." And I was like, "Oh, thank God!" He's yeah. a good actor, unbelievable yeah. actor. Yeah. He the whole time I was like, "This is," he's just sitting there like straight faced. I'm like, "This is terrible." <laughs> Those videos were so good. Was that was in the Vegas media weekend? Yeah, yeah, sounds fun. What was your thoughts? You know, everyone sees these outsider things and think that these Kaniac fans are absolutely insane, and then they see the storm surge and they confirm that the fans are insane <laughs> what was your first reaction seeing that after a win yeah, it's cool it's cool to be a part of it i never got the cool ones where they brought out guys or like did like mm-hmm. little shows Basketball. yeah we just do the the clap but um it's fun i i guess the fans engaged and it's kind of cool like the whole basically the whole arena stays for after the game which mm-hmm. i mean is something that's rare yeah, really rare exactly like when teams win usually half the fans filter out whatever but we have everyone still in there doing the thing with me and it's uh it's pretty cool. That's great. I, it kind of reminds me of like a European soccer game when all these people are standing there doing the clap and yeah. doing a group chant. That's rare, especially in the NHL. People leave with 10 minutes left in the third. Exactly. <laughs> so Cuddy, producer Cuddy came up with a game that we've been playing a little bit on this show, and we have to basically fill out this list of top five people. So oh don't be God. peeking at my computer. I'm not looking I but think uh, huh. Fri- Frizz could help out. I got the answers, oh, too. You got answers, too. Yeah, Sorry. So oh, we're giving it to the Winnipeg uh-huh. boys to figure this out. Sweet. Who Sweet. are the top five most famous actors in the world right now? Top five right. based on searches and all that stuff. Uh, well, I th- George Clooney has to be on there. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> he is not on there. The Rock? The That's Rock is one. definitely on He's there. On He's there. number four. That's a good one. Go. Uh, okay, well... It, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep. Yeah, that's number three. Okay. Oh. Uh, think of all the mo- okay. Um <laughs> Brad Pitt. No. Kevin Hart. 
No. Okay. Uh, John Cena. John Cena. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a terrible on. guess. <laughs> now you're just throwing out um, names. Okay. Adam Sandler. <laughs> Maybe back in the nineties. Okay. We have, we, we have to mix in a female here. Uh, uh, no, I'll give you a hint. There's no females. Okay, no females. On the top five right Guys now. Guys only. Uh-oh. So we have The Rock, and who else do we Leo. have? Leo. You're still looking for three more. Okay. Um, any superheroes out recently? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. you're on the right track. Who's the guy Tom the Holland? There he is. Mm-mm. Spider-Man no. didn't make it? <laughs> I thought Spider-Man was in there for sure. A superhero. There's a couple of superheroes on the list. Oh, uh, Chris Hemsworth. Yep. He's nice. number five, Mr. Thor. Wow. <laughs> Thor. That was a good one. Yeah, I, two left. I like my actors. Top two we need. Top two. Who is... Oh. I got nothing for you. Come on, Jarf. Absolutely nothing. Can you name a movie? Can you give us a hint of a Remember movie? Remember that TikTok sound that's been blowing up? Mm. The, sh- the North Sea? Uh, no, that's a hint. That's a good hint. North Sea. <laughs> that that's that sounds from a movie. That sound is from a movie. A, is it a new movie? No. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh oh, pirate. Yeah. Oh, it's a pirate. Pirate. Yeah. What's the guy's no, name? Johnny Depp. Yep. Oh, there Johnny is. Depp. Oh. Okay, there that's you go. Number two. One we got number one remaining. Number one actor. I think he's back in a big movie right now. It or was it recently? What's can you give us an old movie, past movie? <laughs> if we say <laughs> the Dude, movie no. name, <laughs> it's getting unfair. Um, you're on the right track with with superheroes. Yes. Superheroes. That's your hint. Uh, well, is it um, Downey Jr.? It is Robert oh, Downey oh, Jr. Mr. Iron one, Man. Man. That was a good one. Good, Jeez. good little stump there. Good thinking for you too. Yeah, he gave it last week. He gave us the. The most or the best looking NF or uh, best best looking athletes, and the number one spot was a backup quarterback for the Chiefs. <laughs> it's <laughs> like how the heck are yeah. we supposed to do that so long? Do you want, to, want me to do the other one too? It's up to you. Yeah, we could. That was pretty quick. We'll give it. We'll give a shot clock on this. This one, one might be a little oh, easier, yeah. honestly. Top five most famous singers in the world right now. <laughs> this one we have a mix of genders. Okay. You got I got nothing coming to mind. Beyonce. No. <laughs> you guys should easily guess number Kay, one. Okay, well. If you have a TV, you can guess number one. <laughs> Drake. Oh. No. Bieber. Also no. Oh. TV. Um, um, the biggest <laughs> biggest name in social media and everything. Right Taylor now. Swift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we yeah. go. Why was that not automatic? That should have been <laughs> automatic. <laughs> That's number one. Okay, um, so we got T. Swift. We got Morgan Wallen. Mm. What? Uh, maybe Luke Combs. We did a I few wish. Songs these, this, guys, this these guys person. are not worldwide famous. Um, okay, worldwide famous. Kanye. A few songs. <laughs> <laughs> Love the old Kanye. What are the <laughs> other songs? We did, the a, songs? We, did a few, we did a TikTok or two with this other person. Oh, um, Tate McRae. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're thinking too small oh, eh? you're uh, thinking a year for you page okay <laughs> what about uh it might be hard ariana grande yes, yes. there's oh, one. Oh, you got All two right. number four uh what about let's see here olivia rodrigo yep ding 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 oh. two left look at that thinking of all there's the a female names. and a male left the male the, when you the guess female it, one might be it. tough yeah it's kind of older yeah older. she's older she's older and he's <laughs> <laughs> no clue he's a stud he's a boy band stud at a, t- at a time oh uh harry styles <laughs> yeah okay oh, yeah. what's a what's the next hint she's older mm. uh does she have any good bangers oh yeah yeah, yeah. Lady Gaga? No. Rihanna. <laughs> Don't no. be throwing out names. <laughs> <laughs> Think. Um, kind of same timeline as yeah. G- Lady Gaga, though. Yeah, just think, like, <laughs> for us, it was, like, late middle school. I guess Jarv was a little younger. Gwen <laughs> Stefani. I was going <laughs> to say oh, her. Be <laughs> I was actually going to say her. No. Um, it's a one-named person. They have only one name. There's a stage name. Kesha? No. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> 
I yeah, wish the one name rocking. stage definitely helps, and it's not Beyonce. Correct. It is. No. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that you said it. Um, okay. Mm. It's not Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> not Fergalicious. Um, one name. What else? One what name. else can you one give name. us? I don't know. She's from the UK, I believe. There's I a. Oh, Adele. Adele oh, rakes nice. in. That's all five. Okay, yeah. Well, ding, ding, ding. Tricky, ding. making us think. Yeah, they're pretty good. Not bad. Thank you, Cuddy, for making those lists. Heck of a game. Yep. <laughs> Yelly, we'll yep. shoot it over to you. Okay, so we get the hockey questions. So we do a little thing. You explain what no bad hockey yeah, questions so are. Yeah, so each episode we do a no bad hockey question where it's like, it doesn't have to revolve around hockey. It's basically anything. Rev- I guess this one is, Kate. Okay, Take that back. No bad hockey questions re- revolve around like a question that one of our fans sends in. Anything to do with hockey. All right. Um, so these two that I'm going to say are from our fans. First one is, and we're all going to answer this, but oh. what is your hockey ick or pet peeve? Ooh. Ooh. And you could say if it's a, a specific guy that does it <laughs> or oh. anything. Pet peeve. Um, Sir, with you, Will, most work down the line. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> series jumping in. Um, I would say a pet peeve is when someone is a drill buster and they just cannot figure it out that day. <laughs> and I've been th- that drill buster <laughs> before and I get mad at myself, but uh, definitely drill busters are my pet peeve, which is someone who wrecks the drill for everyone in practice, makes it all look sloppy. So, yeah. Mine's any wet equipment. I can't even yeah. function. I can't even think without anything being dry <laughs> what do you do that between periods and wet skates <laughs> just don't move just <laughs> soaking it yeah that's good that's good um pet peeve of mine would probably be i think just some guys routines that they like, might just be like a little like overboard or like they kind of m- they might like try and or their pet pe- or their routine might kind of mess with other people's routines because it's so like out there and this odd uh yeah i just say that some some <laughs> things that bug me on game day <laughs> uh i had a teammate growing up that wouldn't put anything on his socks like no clear tape nothing he would just go <laughs> just go with socks <laughs> and that was it <laughs> and i always thought that was the weirdest thing ever and I it always that stuck feeling. with me because i don't know anyone else that really doesn't at least put some sort of tape or lace on their socks. Like your shin pads are gonna be shit yeah, all over <laughs> the place. All over the place. Okay, so that was the first one. Uh, second one is uh, a question just heard you here, Seth. What What did you buy your mom or parents with your first big contract? I bought them both cars. Oh, oh yeah. well, that's a good son. I know. Well, <laughs> yeah, my mom was driving a beat up, uh, beat up old van. The doors wouldn't close. Like it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wasn't street legal so she had to get a new one and then uh yeah i bought my dad one this summer uh he was driving like a 1993 mercury that wasn't working anymore so wow. it was it was time and i was just happy i could help out were they surprises or did you kind of say hey grab something here my mom's was kind of like like a need like yeah. it was like you can't drive this anymore especially in winnipeg you know the winters <laughs> she had no heat so she was driving oh. with like a blanket on and wow. stuff like that and then my dad was surprised my dad this summer yeah he wasn't expecting it at all and i did it probably a couple of days before i left so it was wow. cool Wow, that's awesome that's huge yeah well thank you everyone for sending your questions in <laughs> really appreciate it i think that wraps up the show yeah you're yeah. great oh, yeah well, seriously you thank me, you so awesome. much uh hope you all enjoyed and be sure to check out the hurricanes the rest of the season and follow our boy seth jarvis so thank you so much and uh we'll see you later